Well, Ben, I am so glad that you're here. And one of the things that I've enjoyed so much is as we drive around town, you're telling me about the times that you were here at OSU. And you graduated in 74, but it, um, what was it like when you were a student here and with your uh, faculty? And uh, what was your experience like? Well, the university itself was a lot smaller then. And uh, I remember uh, one time walking across the field at the football stadium because it was easy access. <laughs> um, but it's, it's changed considerably. It's grown. Um, the art department used to be at Whitehurst on the very top floor. Interesting. And then it moved here to the Gardner uh, Gallery, uh, the Bartlett Center. Now, you had come to us from uh, Santa Fe, where you were studying at uh, the right. school there, what was the right. school? It was the Institute of American Indian Arts and it had started in 62 but I didn't go there until I graduated out of high school at Bing, Oklahoma in uh, 1964. And so um, at that point in my life because I didn't have an art education in high school I felt the need to go to a school where I could receive an art education and then that was a two-year program? It was a two-year program. It was like a postgraduate ah, okay. uh, program. So I didn't receive any type of degree or anything out of that other than education. So when I first got here, being a snot-nosed kid out of an art school, my first encounter with J.J. Uh, McVicker, <laughs> who was the head of the art department at that time, I sat in on his uh, welcoming lecture. And I told him I didn't think the art department was up to snuff. And his response was, well, you came fresh out of an art school, and we're going to be a little different from them. Mm. So <laughs> after that, uh, we got along, but people <laughs> were telling me, do you know who that is? And I said, no, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, as you've, um, when you left OSU and you started making artwork on your own, uh, what, what kinds of things did you bring with you, and what kinds of new things started to work and uh, develop in your personal artwork? Well, there in Santa Fe, I learned the um, technique of woodblock printmaking. And I continued to do that in my off time when I was not studying here in the classrooms. But I think any time you're in a uh, classroom situation, you devote your time to whatever it is you're doing. And so I would draw and I would paint, um, I would pot and, and uh, Generally, I had free reign of what I wanted to do. Um, I think uh, Dean Bloodgood would look at my drawings, and I know that I upset the model on several occasions because when she would peek around my drawing board, the drawings would look nothing like her. Full <laughs> <laughs> abstract shapes oh, and they bright were, colors. They were very abstract <laughs> shapes and forms, and, and she would get upset because I wasn't drawing her uh, as she really looked. Uh, but, uh, so you were working uh, perhaps stylistically in a similar way then? Or? I was. Okay. I was working uh, uh, not the way it is now with my work, but after 33 years of being a professional artist yeah. and devoting my career to that, uh, my style changed over those years. Mm -hmm. um, there appears to be stories behind your work. Um, and I wondered if maybe we could talk about a couple different pieces that sure, are in the sure. show to kind of give an example of what some of the thought process is that goes on behind them. Uh, one of the pieces, uh, Market Gamble, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, people are always asking, are you a gambler? And I said, all artists are gamblers. We all go to these various art shows across the states and we take our artwork and we put it out there like putting it out in the middle of the, the uh, gambling table. And some of us, when we get to the show, we go, God, give me a great show. <laughs> and others saying, boy, I sure hope I'm lucky enough to have a great show. So you see these two symbols yeah. coming out of the heads of these two artists that are holding these cards. And in the background are all these cherries which represent all the art shows that we do across the nation. The uh, market gamble is um, painted and with gouache that you lay down with a brush. In um, When Death Walked the Plains, um, that's all drawn. Uh, it's ink on yeah, paper. Yeah, it's pen and ink. Yeah, and 
phenomenal detail. And I had asked you earlier about the story, and when I learned about it, I was moved even further. And I wonder if maybe you could share that with people. It refers back to um, the beginnings, I'd say, of germ warfare. Uh, Cotton Mather infected these blankets with smallpox, and he gave them to the Indian people. And in this blanket, you see the faces of the ancestors that have passed on. They're uh, cloaked around a skeletal figure. And around the head of the skeletal figure are feathers that are falling from the head, which represent the fallen warrior. And the little dots that you see are dots of light, but they also represent the soul or the spirit of people. And out of the extended hand, you see the buffalo coming out. And just as the buffalo was almost exterminated, but is coming back, so are the Indian people. Well, we're very fortunate to have you here, and I, I really appreciate uh, well, y your presence. And again, thank you to all the collectors who've lent us the work for this exhibition. Well, you're so. very welcome, and I appreciate you inviting me, and I appreciate uh, the uh, education I, hear, I received here at OSU. Thank you. You're very welcome.